All right. So, uh, yeah, as Steve said, it's going to be a quick update about uh, some of the things that happened since the CTI summit last year. Um, so the idea is to talk a little bit about uh, the development itself, the effort behind it, and then also go through the main new features that popped up. This is especially important because most of the time we're not really great at UX. Most people uh, miss a lot of the new stuff that pops up. So we like to recap it a little bit so that you know what to look for basically in the tool. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about the update to MISP3 that is coming sometime in the future that is currently being worked on. So. Since a year ago, basically, we've had a total of almost 2.2k commits. Uh, we have 80 contributors that have contributed to the MIS software uh, and its uh, supporting libraries. Uh, we've had a total of 14 releases, so we are now kind of settling in on that monthly cadence. So hopefully nobody is here to uh, come at us with pitchforks about having to update every two weeks. So we've kind of uh, settled in on a, a, a sane uh, update schedule. And besides that, there is something new. Uh, we basically had a total of almost 330 commits on the 3.x branch. So for those of you that um, that uh, haven't been keeping up with uh, some of the things coming to MISP, it's uh, the biggest overhaul that we've done so far uh, of the software, uh, moving to a new framework and so on. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, later on. So generally, what all of these commits uh, ended up doing were a, lot, a long list of bug fixes and minor improvements. So that's the, our bread and butter, basically. We get a lot of uh, ideas and requests and so on via GitHub, via events that we go to, or via our various different uh, chat channels. So we've been following up on those and trying to get the software in a uh, more usable state for, um, uh, for the community out there. We've also been doing a lot of refactoring internally, so whenever we, we touch some of the uh, parts of the code base, we try to already move things to something that will be easier to port to that new framework into MISP3. So there have been a lot of reworking internally in the code base as well. This is not that obvious when you are dealing with the tool from a user perspective, but from a developer perspective, there have been quite a few changes. We're also basically trying to support a lot of new types of activities out there. That means that we get new requests from new sectorial use cases. So you're going to see some funky features in MISP and some weird object templates popping up. Anything from recently I've seen um, someone uh, submitted a uh, MISP Galaxy for firearms. Absolutely not a CSERT use case, but there are use cases for that too. So you're going to see some of those where we support some other groups. There have been a lot of security fixes and improvements. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that later on, so make sure that your MISs are up to date. And we've also been trying to, uh, seeing the current geopolitical situation over the past year and a half, uh, adapt MISP a little bit uh, to be more usable in adversarial conditions. So that means we've seen some situations where within the same sharing communities, suddenly you have uh, organizations that want to protect their data against other organizations within the same community. So we've I had to retool a fair bit in MISP. Uh, you're going to find some cryptographic protections for, uh, for against data tampering in large uh, mesh network MISP scenarios. So we've been retooling a little bit for that. So let's go through some of the highlights of what has changed. First of all, uh, one of the big changes coming to MISP over the past year has been the MISP workflows. For uh, those of you uh, 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 that are here tomorrow, Sami is going to have a workshop uh, where he goes in depth about how to use these and how to build your own workshops. Uh, make sure that you uh, join that one. We have a lot of new actions and modules that popped up over the past year. Uh, that means that um, whilst it was last year when Sami presented it at um, the CTI summit, it was kind of a first step to moving towards the workflows. Nowadays, it's really fleshed out with a lot of different ways to hook actions in MISP, to insert your own workflows into the tool directly. There is also a lot of ways to filter uh, the data flows. That means that you can basically decide what data gets modified in which way in each of those workflows. Make sure that you make use of these. It's really a re really flexible system nowadays. Yeah. 
And there is also a really nice uh, complex example that came out of um, uh, a hackathon uh, that basically shows uh, a complex information pipeline workflow, basically how to uh, run uh, uh, checks on the data that, uh, before publishing, how to modify it, and so on. So here is an example of, of one of those workflows. I highly recommend everyone to grab the slide afterwards and have a look and to look at the materials that Sami has published. And he'll be going through this, uh, obviously, tomorrow for those of you that are there. Something else that is quite new and quite well hidden in MISP, uh, we've started our first step towards taxi integration uh, in MISP. Uh, it has been a common recurring scheme that, uh, uh, that users wanted to integrate MISP with, uh, uh, with their various different taxi tools. So currently we have a one-way connection where we can push data from MISP to taxi directly from the user interface. That means you can browse taxi servers, add taxi uh, servers to your uh, uh, MISP instance and start pushing filtered data sets to your uh, uh, taxi server. We've been working on this uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, CISA and with MITRE. Uh, so make sure that you, uh, that you check it out. Uh, it's already part of your MISP, so if you've updated anywhere in the past few months, then you basically already have it. You just probably don't know about it. It's under your sync actions. Another interesting thing is you can also preview the sticks data of um, uh, a collection that you uh, on, on a taxi server, so you can preview what sort of data is there to make decisions on what you want to push. Something else that has been rather uh, big over the past year, and thanks to uh, Christophe Van de Plas for, um, uh, for implementing this, is uh, a native integration of uh, TOTP in MISP directly. So before this, we basically had to rely on external tools, have Keycloak in front of MISP or something else. Nowadays, you can directly have an, an, a, a really sane OTP integration directly in MISP. And you can just enable it and start uh, having your users protected from having their credentials abused. Uh, the interesting thing with the system is that it's uh, either mandatory or optional depending on your server settings. So you can force your users to, uh, to turn OTP on, or you can basically keep it optional if you want to have a more relaxed state. You can also fall back to paper-based single-use tokens. So if you have one of those cases where you cannot take your phone to your workplace or you're working with uh, something that is completely decoupled, you can basically generate 30 single-use tokens or what, well, whatever the number is and then basically go through those and authenticate with those. So you have quite a few options there. We've also been working a lot with improving the analyst tools in MISP over the year. So that means anything from uh, including uh, more precise tag relationships. Until now, if you were uh, labeling data in MISP, basically the label was simply attached to data points, but there was no context of, wh of why that thing is attached to it, how it, how it interacts with that, data, uh, with that context. So now we can add a verb and further describe those relationships. This allows us to build more meaningful graphs out of our data and to really tell a story about what actually happens here. Also, it allows us to better translate to other formats, so it's basically a win-win. We've also uh, done a fair bit of work around the timeline. We've noticed that uh, we had some issues with dealing with larger events and actually do drawing out timelines of what happened during those events, so that has been changed recently. Something else that happened uh, was basically a move to a modernization of some of our ingestion systems in MISP. So for those of you that are familiar with the free text import tool, it would basically parse out a document and barf back a list of attributes at you that it has parsed out based on the values and some internal uh, if statements, basically. Now, this has been improved to also allow the automatic creation of objects. So if it sees that things that can belong together can be combined into an object, it will propose those in the outcome. So that allows you to create more uh, relevant data and save you time rather than going after uh, those attributes after the fact and then combining them, you do it from the get-go. Similarly to, um, uh, to the free text import, uh, the enrichment modules have seen a similar treatment where enrichment modules now are object-aware. That means that you can not only enrich individual attributes and get additional information from other services or other tools and incorporate those in your events, you can enrich entire objects. 
So this, this becomes really interesting because now, uh, nowadays we have moved on to basically sharing almost everything that we share in MIST to objects in the first place. And individual attributes never really tell the full story. So by uh, enriching uh, objects, you get all this context around the attribute that belongs to that single attribute that you're enriching, and you're going to get meaningful, more meaningful results from your enrichment uh, modules as long as they're aware of, uh, of uh, basically the object context that they rely on that. So this is uh, an outcome of uh, Luciano's work at Geek Week, so if anyone is, uh, uh, is doubting still in the outcome of hackathons, this is uh, one of those cases where it has really paid off. So something else, uh, uh, I already mentioned Taxi before, so this was obviously coming as well. So Styx 2.1 uh, has seen quite a lot of uh, alignment in this. So uh, we have uh, uh, Christian, who is sitting here in the front row. He, he since then became uh, the co-chair of the 6TC, and he's been crazy involved uh, on both sides of both building MISP to better align with Styx, but also in improving the standard itself. Uh, so um, uh, he, he's been aiming for a crazy 100% coverage of the 6.2.1 standard in the conversions. It is something that is continuously being improved. So you'll see that every release will have a long set of notes about how it is be, uh, improving. So here he is, he is an, an, a nice image of Christian trying to find some more edge cases in 6.2.1 ingestion. <laughs> So uh, besides that, for visualization, dashboards have seen a pretty thorough rework. One of the things that we noticed was an issue with dashboards was that uh, basically a lot of, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the widgets and uh, tools that we had to drill into the data didn't allow you to configure what you were looking for in the, uh, well enough. So one of the things that we changed was being uh, able to configure each widget more in depth set time ranges, set meta filters, for example, show me everything related to a specific country that I'm interested in, show me everything related to a specific sector that I'm interested in, rather than um, uh, just having global views on the data set. So you can go a lot more in depth in customizing your dashboards. Oops, sorry about that. Also, there are a bunch of new widgets to play with, so if you haven't updated your dashboards in, uh, and haven't looked at uh, configuring a new dashboard for yourself, it's high time to do it. You have a lot more options than you had before. Now, obviously, we want to make our own lives easier. Uh, we run quite a few MISP instances and MISP communities at Circle. So we've been working uh, a fair bit with basically improving um, uh, the administration aspect of MISP. So here are some examples, some of them coming from us, some of them from others, of some of the improvements for ad, uh, admins that have hit MISP. For example, logging has been uh, improved heavily. We have more accurate logs. We log a, a lot more than we did before. We log uh, uh, IP addresses better for uh, the incoming um, uh, requests. And we basically allow also to uh, have users self-audit their connections. Similarly, what you have, for example, with your Google accounts, you can check, for example, which IP addresses you've logged in from before. So you can do some self-vetting of what happened to your account. We can also uh, now pin API keys to IP addresses and IP ranges. Uh, this actually has a, a quite nice story of how this helped recently. Recently, I did a, a demo for an online audience for, of Cerebrate where I had a page open um, um, that showed the API key of an admin account of one of our MISP instances. Luckily, that API key was bound to a single IP address. It was an automation uh, key specifically for Cerebrate, so it could not be abused despite me messing up. So this is another uh, one of those improvements that really <laughs> has saved our bacon since then. Uh, we also made quite a few changes uh, that allow uh, for better support for Dockerize environments. There are more and more MISP users out there that are not natively installing MISP, but rather going the Docker route. So nowadays, uh, you will find fewer hurdles and oddities, for example, in the diagnostics of MISP, complaining about Git repositories not being there, and so on and so forth. So deploying um, MISP in Dockerize environments should be more straightforward. There are a lot of other improvements that I'm not going to go through because it's just tedious and would take too long, so please keep up to date with the change logs if you're interested. But uh, just to mention a few things, uh, there are obviously, besides the MISCore, a lot of changes happening to all the surrounding libraries and tools out there as well. 
So PyMISP has gone through quite a, uh, quite a few changes over, over the past years and improvements. We've seen a host of new galaxies, taxonomies, and object templates pop up. So we've seen a lot of very specific use case ones, sectorial ones, and so on that's, that got added to the main repository. And I really encourage everyone, if you have your own galaxies, your own uh, object templates that you or your, your own community use and nobody else out there, still make the, take the effort, share it with us. It will also help your community members to ingest that data automatically and to have it deployed in their MISP instances. Also, very often, it gives really good ideas for others that, that have similar issues to solve. They see, oh, this is something that was already tackled by this community, even though it's only for their use case. It is something where we can draw inspiration from and build something similar for ourselves. So uh, we've seen a lot of improvements there. And an example for one of those that, that popped up recently that is super handy is uh, uh, a tool that basically converts the entire full uh, public uh, Sigma rules out there along with the attack relationships and automatically creates a galaxy of those in MIS. So this is one of those examples of a small script, a small tool that ends up opening up a massive report, wealth of, uh, uh, of knowledge and information to be uh, used directly from your tool. So make sure that you include those. Now, talking a little bit about vulnerabilities, I've already hinted at this before. We had, again, a long list of penetration tests and evaluations come in uh, for MISP. We've had a total of 13 CVEs over the past year, including some critical ones. So please make sure that you update. We're always uh, very vocal about vulnerabilities, and we want, as a C-cert, we basically want to encourage the act of sharing information about uh, uh, any vulnerabilities out there. Uh, so we always publish those on our website, and we always make sure that we ring all alarm bells when something happens. Now, something that has been really interesting over the past year, and also partially why uh, some new uh, critical vulnerabilities have been discovered after uh, some of those after many years, uh, was thanks to a company called Sigrin Security, who has been contracted by the Luxembourgish uh, Army to uh, continuously test MISP and Cerebrate. Uh, for vulnerabilities, and they have uh, built a new tool called Cake Fuzzer. So, if you're ever uh, in the business of building a Cake PHP based tool, have a look at that. It really is magically. So, it's it produced really good results for us. Uh, it found stuff that we never would have uh, caught otherwise. Uh, so, highly recommending that. And from what I know from the from the uh, from the Green Security, they're also looking at porting this to other frameworks. It's a really interesting tool in, in a sense that it's uh, doing in-place replacement of parts of the code base to be um, uh, able to inject um, uh, potentially malicious uh, strings in your variables rather than just trying to hit your API and fuzz the more traditional way. So it's, it's really nice. And there's a URL for that. Have a look at the slides afterwards for that. So just a quick uh, talk about MISP3 and what is going on there. So for those of you unaware, it's basically um, uh, moving the current MISP code base to a newer version of the framework. It is something that's been ongoing for a painfully long time, and we're still quite far off from actually uh, having moved everything. So for all of you that want to jump on the topic and help us out with, uh, um, uh, with some coding work, everyone is more than welcome. The idea is to move to a more modern version of Cake PHP along with a modern version of Bootstrap and so on and leave all those old uh, libraries that we use behind. Now, one of the ultimate goals for us is to have full compatibility with MIST2. So that is basically a must-have for us. So for any tools that you've built around MISP, there should be no change. Uh, we want to maintain 100% compatibility with the API of MISP2. Uh, also, we want to kind of rework some of the concepts and some of the ways we display and interact with users, and we want to have a more analyst-centric UI in general. It's easier to know what you're doing there. Uh, so a large part of the libraries used by MISP have already been ported. Step-by-step, uh, step, we're slowly moving verticals over to a new system. Um, th there are a lot of um, uh, concepts being test, uh, tested for new UI um, uh, layouts, for, for event views, and so on. So please jump on board, let us know what you think about it. Uh, in install it and play around with it. There's also a, a lot of heavy um, uh, test-driven development going on, thanks to Luciano. So he's basically b uh, built a framework for us that, that where we uh, um, go test first before we uh, uh, implement any of the uh, scopes. 
So hopefully it will, it will also mean more resilient code in the future for us. So please join the effort and join the development of that. Here's a small example of one of the proposed uh, layouts for the um, future of the event view um, uh, with a, a lot more focus on uh, high-level information rather than just lists of uh, attributes being thrown at you. So that's basically it for the yearly recap of what's been happening with MISP. So if you have any questions, now's a good time. <laughs> Thank you. So. Uh, so, a uh, question around uh, MISP deployment. Uh, MISP deployment. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, there's some work going on uh, in regards to like deploying MISP using Docker uh, image and stuff. So is that community maintained or is that like officially maintained by Circle? Uh, that's a good question. So it's kind of community maintained, but also two of the people working on, on those community releases are two separate ones. They're also now part of the core team. So it's not officially under the MISP umbrella, but they are, uh, it's, it's as official as it gets. And both of them have different paradigms that, uh, that, um, uh, that they follow. So. Both of them have different advantages, different changes, and so on. So make sure that you check them out. We basically are on a daily uh, basis in contact with them. We're working with them on improving them. So it's kind of part of the uh, core kind of community. So it's a mix. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, second question about authentication. Mm -hmm. is, um, is, is OIDC going to be natively supported? Is what's OIDC authentication going to be needed? Any plans for that? Yes. So uh, authentication part, yes, it's already supported uh, natively. However, user enrollment is not. Um, so it's kind of a, a weird situation where we have an official module for OIDC. Uh, so you can use Keycloak or whatever with it. However, it will not enroll new users. So you still need to manually enroll the users and create those in Keycloak as well. But this is now changing with Cerebrate. So with Cerebrate, what, I, what we're currently working on is user enrollment in junction with Keycloak and other OIDC platforms. So the idea will be that you use uh, that to enroll a user, Cerebrate, and that will be pushed automatically to Keycloak and to MISP at the same time. So, yeah. Okay, any more questions on the topic of what has been discussed? No? In that case, thank you very much. Thank you.